for your last presentation was perfect. You know, yeah. You know, yeah, so you know what I did? I, I at the very end, what I, I all I did was I, I took off my headphones and I just sat close to the laptop, trying to get my head as close to the laptop as possible. <laughs> so you're like eating the laptop, Mike? No, it worked. Yeah. But it would have been nice if I could get my headphones to work. But it but so when I did that, it sounded fairly clear. Like right now, how does it sound? It's better than it was when you started. Okay. I, I think I was talking a little lower. Like I got to talk a little bit higher, I guess, decibel, and then it, I guess, a little better. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I'll go with good. that. Glad we got that debugged ish anyway. All right. Well, it's, uh, it's the half hour. So uh, let's get this thing on the road. Um, yeah. Live, live from Michigan. It's late night with IDR. Um, so we got we, we have two sessions this week. We've got this one, uh, which is just an hour, and then we've got a longer one on Friday. Um, and because this one is short, we are not going to spend a lot of time. Um, Sue and I are not going to spend a lot of time listening to ourselves talk. Uh, you get to see the note well because you get to see it every time, and. As usual, it's uh, up to you to know that when you uh, when you join one of these meetings at some point, um, whether you remember it or not, you did sign a, a, a piece of click wrap that said that you will abide by you know all these various rules. So if you don't know what they are, um, maybe you should go check. Uh, in particular, they pertain to um, disclosing any IPR that you know of, but there's other stuff in there too. Um, and there's all the references and uh, if you need legal counsel, I'm not it. Um, so uh, you know where to find the materials. Uh, you definitely know where to find the meet echo because you're here. Um, if you want to help with the notes, that's where. And here's our agenda for today. And like I said, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking. We're just gonna go into the first uh, first presentation unless I, I will pause and see if anybody has any questions. We will do a longer um, chairs thing on, on Friday because we have a longer session there. Seeing no one in the queue. Um, uh, who, who's our presenter for, for the first one? Is it uh, Wei or Agent? Okay. I'm going to stop my video and mute myself and please go ahead and tell me when you want to flip slides. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, IDR <coughs> expert. Uh, I'm Wei Wang from China Telecom. Uh, I'm going to introduce our revision of the draft after I, uh, last meeting. Uh, next page, please. Uh, based on the previous discussion, uh, we made the following change. Uh, we add the description of the limitations of existing solutions. Uh, we clarify some previous unclear aspects of RDRF mechanism and modify the withdrawal mechanism of RDRF. Uh, and we add the solution of RDRF mechanism in the scenario of several VRFs in a PE import VPN routes which carry the same RT. Next page, please. In this scenario, uh, PEs establish IBGP sessions with RR to ensure the routes can be transmitted within AS100. Uh, where P124 maintain VPN routing information and RR don't maintain any VRFs. Uh, the RDRF mechanism in different devices is independent. Uh, when the VRF of VPN1 in P1 overflows, P1 will find out the main source of VPN routes 
in this VRF, um, we assume it is P3 and the overflow VPN roots RD is RD1. Uh, then P1 will extract it P3's host address and source RD from BGP update message and generate a BGP root refresh message contains a RDRF entry and send it to RR. Next page, please. Mm, but sometimes uh, several VRFs in a PE may import VPN rules carry the same RT. Uh, in this scenario, VRF 1, 2, and 3 import VPN rules contain RT3. Mm, these three VRFs have different maximum prefix. When the P VPN rules carry RD3 cause the overflow of VRF3, P will send a BGP root refresh message contains a RDRF entry to RR. Then RR will stop sending associated VPN routes to P. Uh, however, mm, this will cause VRF1 and 2 failing to receive VPN routes contain RD3. Uh, the local determination of the PE can be used to inhibit the PE from sending RDRF entries uh, when the resources of the device are not exhausted. Uh, it only prevents the overflowed VRF from importing related VPN routes uh, without sending RDRF. Mm, next page, please. Mm. When RR receives the root refresh message, uh, it checks the entry and adds it into its ADJ rebound uh, so that RR will stop sending VPN routes contains RD1 to P1. Mm. If the processing capacity of RR reaches the limit, uh, it will find out the peer that sends the most routing entries to it. Uh, we assume it is P3 and the overflow VPN routes RD is RD1. Mm, then RR will generate a BGP root refresh message contain a RDRF entry based on the result of calculation and send it to P3. Uh, next page, please. <coughs> Uh, uh, when P3 receives the root refresh message, it checks the entry and adds it into its ADG ribout so that P3 will stop sending associated VPN routes to RR. Uh, and next, uh, next page. Mm. Uh, when the RDRF mechanism is triggered, uh, the alarm information will be generated and sent to the network operators. The operators should manually uh, configure the network to resume normal operation. Uh, after returning to normal, the device sends withdraw ORF entries to its peers uh, who have previously received ORF entries. Uh, then, the network operation will return to normal. And uh, next page, please. Uh, okay, uh, the above is our revision to this draft. And any comments to our work are welcome. Thank you. So if, if there if there is no no comment or no problem, can we uh, begin the adoption call after this meeting?
uh, <coughs> talking to a to a closed mic. Um, I, I wasn't able to understand what you said earlier, Ajahn. I'm sorry. Um, what what I was going to say though is, you have the question adopt as a working group document on your um, on your slide, and I, I think that it would be at this point reasonable for us to to do that adoption call. I, I will say that uh, you know sort of the the traffic on the list previously did provide quite a bit of feedback that looked mostly sort of. They have, they have discussed, they have discussed uh, this uh, question on the list for a long time, and uh, the, the update form has uh, um, uh, give answers to all the comments. Mm. Okay, uh, AC, please go ahead. Yeah, I. This is AC Lindum from Cisco. I was going to say that, yeah, the previous discussion, there was a lot of objection to using RD for policy. And I don't see that that's changed. So maybe that'll come through in the adoption call. Uh, yeah, we, we, have, we have compared the uh, other solution with uh, RD policy. Uh, then uh, the other solution is not suitable for the uh, current scenario. So we still s select the current uh, protocol intention. Chair, mm. please go ahead. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm clear. Super. So um, I think uh, I've been tracking all the comments. Uh, uh, I, I still don't, I still believe RD-based mechanisms are not useful. Um, I think uh, I don't see anything that has been drastically changed. That being said, maybe we can take this on the mailing list and, and hopefully can provide another round of feedback. Yeah, okay. I think you can uh, discuss uh, the, your concern for the current solution and we can discuss on the mailing list. Any other questions, comments? Uh, you can take yourself out of the queue now, Kair. Or maybe I can take you out. Um, OK, uh, thank you very much. We will take this up on the list. And next, please. Oh, wait, we have someone in the queue. Uh, uh, Giuseppe, did you want to say something? Or did you, are you putting yourself in to present? Um, you, you can just click on the mic to uh, start speaking. Huh. Giuseppe, I see you um, putting yourself in the queue. There you go. Hello? Please go ahead. Yes, we hear you. Okay, okay. Uh, sorry, I put me in the queue, but I, I had to unmute. Okay. Uh, yeah, good morning. Uh, I'm going to present the update of the BGPSR policy extension to enable IT. So, uh, next. Uh, yeah, just a recap about the background and motivation for this draft. So, uh, the in situ flow information telemetry uh, refers to data plane on path techniques. Uh, in particular, uh, we can mention uh, uh, in band M and alternate marking. So, with the IP terms, we want to refer to the um, these on path telemetry techniques with just a single word. Uh, on the other end, the, we have the SR policy that uh, are identified through the well-known tuple and uh, an add-on may be informed about the candidate path in different ways, in particular uh, by PGP, for example. Uh, and this document aims to define an extension to BGP to distribute the SR policies. 
carrying ICQ information, um, ICQ information. And in particular, in this way, we want to enable the inbound OM and alternate marking when the SR policy is applied. So this is the scope of, um, of this draft. Next. Yeah, in this slide, we just recap the, um, the changes from the last version that was presented up during the last online meeting. Um, now we are at the 04 version. We got some comment during the last uh, IETF session from Joel. And in this regard, we clarified um, the use of the IFIT terms because there is something confusing with another document that is IFIT framework. So in this case, the IFIT terms is used just to indicate the inbound OM and alternate marking method. So all the in situ flow information telemetry techniques as also the acronym say. Um, the other comment from Ketan was about the um, routing and control plane considerations. Uh, we are also having an exchange emails just uh, in, in the last days with Ketan to clarify better. We, we tried to address this comment, but there is something pending uh, that needs to be clarified. Uh, we got also other inputs on the list uh, from Juanan about how to handle multiple, multiple IP sub TLVs. For example, in this case, we clarified that inbound OM and alternate marking can coexist or can also uh, be uh, separated, uh, can be enabled only uh, alternate marking on only uh, inbound OM and vice versa. Uh, the definition of uh, also Jim give a good comment here to define one general sub TLV for IFIT. And uh, we define the different IFIT function as sub sub TLVs. In this case, it can be managed and handled in, in an easy way. Um, and also, we improved in the section about the SR policy operation. So we added more details about this operation also based on the, uh, the component, you can say the other document about the fee policy drafting idea. So next. Yeah, uh, yeah in this slide, we just uh, explained that the FE attributes can be attached at the candidate path level as a sub TLVs. Um, yeah, we also got a comment from Drew that this figure needs to be updated considering the latest version of the um, fee policy draft. So we will do that in the next version. So next slide. Yeah, this is the detail of the IFE attribute sub TLV. And uh, you can see the list of the sub TLVs that are currently defined. So the inbound and pre-allocated option, the incremental trace option, the direct export option, the edge to edge edge option for inbound and and the, the, um, the latest one is about the announced alternate marking sub -tilties. So in the next slide, uh, we can see the, the details of all the option sub -tilty. Uh, in this case, we are talking about sub sub TLVs, of course, and of the type of these and also the details of the um, metadata that are needed are taken from the relevant IOM draft for, uh, in, for example, the IOM draft in ITPM. Um, so there is something that is not new now, but it's just taken from the relevant IOM document. Next. Uh, yeah, this is the, the alternate marking sub TLVs. Also in this case, this is taken from the relevant alternate marking document, and in particular the application, the document about the application of the alternate marking. Uh, okay, next. Yeah, in this slide, we just uh, clarify some information about the SR 
policy operation with active attributes. Uh, this document complement, uh, we want to clarify that this document complement the segment routing P policy draft by adding the IP attribute. So for all the operation, we have referred to this draft. In particular, uh, we can consider that these IP sub TLVs are optional. So an implementation may consider to ignore the unsupported or unrecognized I fit sub TLV, so we don't want that these TLVs will influence in some way the the right functioning. So it can be considered as optional. Uh, on the other hand, the SR policy and LRIs uh, that have been considered acceptable can be evaluated for propagation and can include also the I fit information. Uh, regarding the error rendering actions, for now we considered it as for the segment routing fee policy, but during a comment, we got a comment from Drew that we have to include some specific error handling actions also in our draft. I also think we need, so maybe in the next revision, we have to include some information also regarding the error handling actions. Uh, for the validation of IP attributes, uh, this is left to the SR policy module, uh, as it is also uh, detailed in other case for by the segment routing fee policy draft. Uh, next, yeah, the for this draft, the working group adoption is ongoing. I have reported the inputs from uh, just a summary of the inputs from Drew that will be addressed in the, in the next revision. So we can, in particular, we have to add more facts about the error handling, the procedure for the start, stop and updates and backward compatibility. So we will complete this part. I, I didn't, uh, I, I could not put uh, the last minute comment from Ketan, but we are having some exchange about, uh, we can say the in inclusion of the SR PM operation. So we may address, uh, you know, we are, we are building the building blocks of the whole architecture. So of course we need to uh, include more details about the SR PM. We need to understand if the real place is this draft or maybe another general draft. Let's see. So anyway, welcome question and comments and thank you for the time. So Ketan, I think you're first. Hello, Likar Cisco. Uh, so thanks uh, Giuseppe for, uh, uh, for your you know, re uh, responses and update. I wanted to clarify that uh, I'm not asking for more information to be added into this uh, BGP draft uh, because for most of uh, the SR policy, uh, what BGP is doing is only like a opaque or uh, you know almost opaque uh, kind of a, uh, you know, transport functionality and all of the actual processing and uh, interpretation and you know provisioning in the forwarding and all of that is left to you know what you are calling also as an SRPM module. So my suggestion would be, like you said, these are building blocks. My suggestion would be for the authors uh, to write that in a separate, uh, perhaps in a Spring document, uh, and you know work that through the Spring working group. Uh, so I just want to clarify: I'm not asking those things to be uh, brought into the IDR document or the PSEP document or the IGP documents, for that matter. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, now I see. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah, we need to put this in a in this general document. Maybe some exist is already existing document or a new one. Maybe uh, I would to... suggest a I would suggest a new one if you don't okay. mind. And okay. uh, yeah, uh, because without that piece, uh, it's difficult for uh, many of us, perhaps, or at least me, to understand how all of these protocol stuff are kind of fitting together. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I, I see, I see your point. Yeah. Thank you. 
Thanks. Okay, uh, Zafar, please go ahead. Zafar, I see you in the queue. Um, you're uh, unmute yourself and uh, speak if you like. Now? Yep. Oh, great. Thanks. So uh, my question is that uh, there is uh, a draft, uh, which is uh, uh, draft song uh, OPSAW working group on IFIT framework. And that is an individual document. So I thought it may be better to work on the overall framework before defining the protocol extensions. Um, there are certain elements that are in the frameworks that is not covered by the draft, but it would be better to, to cover the holistic framework first. Uh, and the second comment is that I did notice there is a typo in the adoption poll. Uh, the, the adoption poll points to a different draft, um, which is path MTU uh, draft. Uh, so that may have led to some confusion during adoption. Um, but anyway. There, there was a secondary post to that to undo it, but perhaps it did lead to some confusion. Uh, but I did send down a correcting uh, mail to that. Thank you. But coming back to the first comment that uh, you were uh, description before the protocol extension would be nice to have and being defined. There's some work also in six men that is going on this area and other working groups. As well. Yeah, if I can answer your first point, Zafar. Um, yeah, regarding, I know that there is the IP framework draft in Opta Vuji, and but uh, you can consider that the first one, the Opta Vuji draft, is the framework, so it's a general draft. Now we are just building uh, one of the blocks of the um, so this is i think is independent from the world framework because this this can also be adopted without the framework because uh i fit in this in this case is just used to as acronym of in situ flow information telemetry that stands for all the on path telemetry in particular in band ram and alternate marking so it is not so related with the world framework. So the world framework can use this building block, but it does not imply that if we the framework is not accepted, this draft can can always be used by other implementation, by other architects. So I want to make this this difference that because I think uh, it's just the AFIT acronym is is in both drafts, but are two separate things. Different name? I don't know. Yeah, but but there's some that? element of I, I fit, like postcard telemetry and all that. I'm not too sure how they will uh, get modified later on once this draft is adopted. Uh, I, let's let's move the rest of this discussion um, to the list. I think that you know, sort of, there's. I think I understand your your two different um, perspectives, and we probably won't make a lot of further headway right now on it. Um, in, in any case, I'd like to let the other two people, in the, um, other three people in the queue, speak first, and then if we have extra time, we could continue. Um, so, uh, Gian, please go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, amazingly well. <laughs> All right. Oh, finally. All right. <laughs> that was a good breakthrough here. All right. So, <laughs> um, so I, I had a question regarding, I noticed in the draft it's referencing the, uh, I think it was in section two, the BGP tunnel encapsulation attribute. And I guess in the latest version, I guess there was a lot of updates with the BGP tunnel encapsulation um, of draft. Um, that actually in section 3.7, the references the prefixed sub TLV. So I was wondering like how is, uh, like it, it doesn't have, 
there's some details that's in the draft, but I was wondering how is the uh, segment routing key policy leveraging the prefix of sub TLV that's referenced, you know, with using the BGP encapsulation attribute? So that was, it was in section 2.2, .2, like in this SR policy and tunnel encapsulation attribute. So that the updated, the, there's a draft for the VGP tunnel encapsulation attribute. Like in that draft, there's a section 3.7 that references the prefix in sub TLV. Yes, yes, we also got a similar comment uh, yeah, from you. I will, I will update, of course. I will update in the next. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was just wondering, could you kind of describe how is it referenced? How is it, uh, you know, I guess because it's leveraging the BGP tunnel encapsulation attribute, but how is it leveraging that, I guess, using the prefix SID, like when it's building the candidate path? I guess, how is, how is it? Because I guess in the draft, it doesn't have much detail, but I guess that, is that what you're saying? You'll, you'll update it to provide some more detail? Yes, yes. Um, because okay. yeah, the, um, yeah, I will write more details about that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Thanks. And uh, Zafar, I see you back in the in the queue. Do you have another point you want to bring? I do not. Oh. Okay. So I will take you two guys out of the queue. I think that we are. Done with this one then. Thank you very much. And Gia, are you going to present on this one? Yes, I see you are. Okay, please go ahead. We are not getting audio from you, or at least I'm not. Okay. You know, says he's coming. All right, we'll be patient. Hello. Hello, John. Okay. Yeah, hi, Robin. Uh, okay. I will ask Jamie to use my laptop. <laughs> okay. 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 Now, can you hear me? Yep, hear you fine. Okay. Yeah, so, this is Jadong. I'm going to uh, present this uh, draft um, BGP extended community for identifying the target nodes. Uh, this is a 0.3 version. And here are the co-authors of this draft. Okay, next page, please. Okay, first of all, a little recap of this motivation. Uh, we know that um, in some cases, for the BGP route distribution, the target of some of the BGP routing or policy information may be just a one or a small group of the BGP speakers in the network. Uh, some examples are the BGP flows back and the BGP SR policy. And we can see maybe there are also other use cases to which require such kind of behavior. And for BGP SR policy, uh, the route target is used to determine the target node of this uh, as a policy route. Well, for um, other address families, uh, the route target may still need to be used for the VRF matching. In such cases, uh, using RT for both the target node identification and the VRF matching could be uh, problematic. We will show an example in the next page. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, this uh, uh, picture shows an example uh, when uh, node A want to advertise a VPN flows back route uh, to node B at VRF red on node B. And if we use RT to designate the target node B, we will uh, 
include both an RT for identifying the node B and the RT identify the VRF red in the BGP update message. And uh, this message is sent from A to RR and reflected by R to other nodes in the network. But uh, this route will be imported by um, both node B and node D because a uh, node D will use the RT red to match with its local VRFs. And if it is matched, it will import the route to VRF red, regardless whether this route contains an RT uh, which identifies the node D or not. So we can see there's a problem in such cases. So the, uh, the purpose of this document is to define a generic mechanism to uh, designate the target nodes for information advertised using BGP. This can be independent from the use of RT, so we can avoid this kind of uh, problems shown in this picture. Next page, please. Okay, this is a proposed solution. We introduce a new BGP extended community to carry the target node information. Uh, it is called a node target extended community. And the figure, uh, the, the format is shown in this uh, picture. Uh, it basically, it will need to include a four octite target BGP identifier uh, to identify the, the target nodes of this BGP update message. Uh, in one BGP update message, uh, it can carry one or more node target extended community to, uh, to identify the target nodes, a group of target nodes in the network. Uh, next, slide. next slide, please. Okay, here we uh, summarize the procedures of this mechanism. Uh, first of all, the sending BGP speaker will need to add uh, one or more no targets to the BGP update. And on the receiver side, if one of the no targets met in the message match with a local BGP identifier, the information is out in the update message is eligible to be uh, kept and installed on the receiving node. And if the receiving node is a route reflector, the route is eligible to be further reflected if there's other no targets in the update. And here, uh, the R may also choose to reflect the routes only to the BGP peers whose BGP ID uh, match with the one of our no targets in the message. And if the receiver is a ASBR, uh, this route is eligible to be advertised to its ABGP peers which, whose BGP ID match with one of the NT no targets in the update. Well, for this ASBR case, uh, this route is just limited to the uh, uh, multiple ASs which are administered by uh, the same operator. Uh, for other cases, uh, uh, for other inter AS cases, it will need some further study. And if none of the no targets match with the local BGP identifier, the information in the BGP update is not eligible to be installed on the receiving BGP node. And if this receiving node is a road reflector, the route is still eligible to be reflected to its uh, clients or peers. The same uh, procedure as above, the R may choose to reflect the route only to the peers whose BGP ID match with the no target. Okay, next page, please. Uh, here we show the updates in this uh, latest version. Uh, first of all, we describe the problem case in detail uh, when the RT-based mechanism is used and uh, we choose to use BGP identifier instead of the IPv4 or IPv6 addresses in the no target ex extended community. This was uh, discussed in the previous meetings and uh, also think uh, it's a, a reasonable point to use BGP identifier in this case. And for the procedure section, we also re reorganized the content and include the procedures for both the road reflector and the ASBR for the, we call it intra-domain scenarios, which is uh, one single operator case. Uh, finally, we add a compatibility consideration section in this draft and we will continue to maybe revise it based on comments about this compatibility part. Okay, next page. Uh, for next steps, uh, here we would like to collect the and comments and feedbacks from the team uh, working group 
then we can revise the draft accordingly. Yeah, that's all. Okay, uh, looks like we have people in the queue. Uh, Jeff, you're first. Hi, this is Jeff, microphone check. You're loud and clear. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, I do find the idea of a extended community being used for filtering purposes uh, that's tied to node semantics to be useful. I am a little concerned about this being used as part of reflection procedures. It's, um, I, I would be supportive of seeing something like this for something like uh, RT constraint, but I don't think I would want to see this as a uh, general mechanism applied as a magic filter at route reflection level. Okay, I think, uh, yeah, it's reasonable that uh, the RT filtering mechanism can be optional and we can maybe in next version to say that it's uh, uh, whether to use this, uh, filtering on the RT is determined by the operator's policy and it's also the position of the RT, maybe something like that. Uh, sure, so the, the two things I would comment on is that if RT constraint is okay, uh, there was prior IETF discussion about allowing RT constraint to be applied to things that are not route targets. So this is work that I, IDR has already decided it's willing to do. Uh, my second comment is that uh, if you do want that, uh, your procedure still may not help you in your original slides. Uh, RT constraint says that if any of the targets match, then it would be received. So in your example where you had a red and a blue uh, VRF, therefore red and blue route target, if you're trying to do a restriction to a subset, you still may not get the semantics you're looking for. And I think that may still be a yes. problem even if you weren't using RT constraint. Yes, yes. That's my comments, thank you. Okay. okay. I'll just you remark can... that uh, the uh, Jeff Tensura says, uh, plus one Jeff over in the chat window. Uh, and Randy, you're up. Hear me? Yep. Uh, my notoriously bad memory is that the BGP identifier is unique only within a single autonomous system. Therefore, I wonder the semantics of when you cross eBGP. Yeah, I got your point, yeah. Uh, in the beginning, we uh, firstly consider the uh, use case in the intro AS scenario, like the using re route reflector case. Uh, for the inter AS case, as I just mentioned, we firstly want to limit it to the uh, multiple AS is uh, administered by the same operator. In that case, maybe the BGP identifier can be management by the, a single uh, team and uh, the uh, conflict can be avoided. But I, I guess can I know- Can not equal it. must. Sorry? Can is not identical to must. Yeah, yeah, I agree. We, we need to consider that uh, the inter AS case further and uh, any contribution or suggestion will be welcome. Thank you. Rudiger, please go ahead. Rudiger, we see you in the queue, but I uh, don't hear you speaking. Have you unmuted? Ah, okay, that's a mechanism. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, are you essentially at this point in time saying you will uh, not, will uh, slash the uh, inter AS case if you do not, if you uh, uh, want to extend there, uh, you have to figure out whether a control of uh, <clears throat> propagation of the extended community on 
EBGP can be done uh, if, <clears throat> if, well, okay, as far as I remember, there are very few BGP implementations out that allow policy uh, to, uh, uh, in fact, match uh, certain extended communities and say, please drop these. Um, if you if you if you start to propagate such a community and you have to assume that neighbors may not be able to clean up this uh you are you are opening a leak where uncontrolled control messages may be spread globally that's a really bad idea yeah I understand for the inter AS case, uh, we need more considerations about this, like uh, extended community propagation and the security considerations. Yeah, so we we want to limit the, the use case to first as a first step to inter AS and the, maybe multiple AS and the same operators control. That may be more, maybe easier. Uh you could resolve this by just using large communities instead of an extended community. Yeah, that may be another way to carry this information. Well, maybe, I'm not sure whether what community will not have the similar issue as the extended community, the propagation at the inter uh, boundary Maybe this can be this can be discussed further on the mail list. Okay, thanks. And uh, Guillaume, let's take this as the last comment because then we'll need to move on to our next one. Please go ahead. So, um, uh, the use case that I think that you have you're addressing is um, is it primarily for for BGP flow spec for distribution or are there, like in the draft, are there any other use cases or is it just for the primarily for, for BGP flow spec? One of the use cases is a BGP flow spec. Well, we think it can be generic for other uh, address families. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, like the concept, I think that you're thinking of using extended community attribute. I guess that's, you know, with it like an you know, overlay VPN, I, you know, but if it's really generic, it does sound like, you know, using large communities or even maybe standard communities that it doesn't necessarily have to be an extended community that, that could work. And it could be just, just regular standard communities may be able to like just tagging, you know, and, and it would be less, co less complex. You know, you know, versus actually using reusing extended versus using extended communities. Yeah, you mean using standard community? Yeah. So, yeah. Do the and same you thing. The, also, oh, it also makes it independent of VPN overlays, so it's not it's independent of, um, you know, the MPLS like VPN construct, or if you're doing um, even if you're doing like VRF light but non VPN not uh, non MPLS related overlay but this becomes independent it's just just you're just tagging and so if you're just needing to tag you may be able to get away with standard communities maybe yeah i got a point uh, i will think about uh, to compare different uh, options and uh, feedback to you later thank you Thanks. All right, thanks for the presentation and the comments and our final uh, presentation for this evening or morning or day or whatever it is. Uh, not if you're speaking, uh, I can't hear you. Hello? Hello? Uh, yeah, Can you all hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, so, good afternoon from Beijing and uh, it's good to have you all here. And today I'm going to uh, um, update you with uh, our uh, 
uh, uh, 01 version draft, uh, which we have already uh, presented uh, at IETF 108, uh, which is titled Traffic Steering Using uh, BGP Flow Spec with uh, SRV6 Policy. So next page, please. So uh, I'm going to start with uh, two application scenarios of our uh, draft. So uh, generally, we want to do uh, traffic steering uh, using BGP flow spec. And we are not like proposing uh, any uh, new encoding uh, of, of, uh, in this draft, but some you know, operational, uh, operational changes. So uh, now suppose we want to, uh, this is a uh, L3 VPN uh, traffic steering scenario. And in the next scenario, we'll talk about the uh, internet traffic steering, okay? And uh, in this case, we want to uh, steer the traffic uh, from the, the, the blue path to the yellow path, okay? And then, um, so we have a um, either a controller or any just regular uh, BGP flow spec speaker uh, that can advertise BGP route to uh, the head end of an SRV6 uh, domain, uh, which is uh, router two at this case. And uh, this uh, BGP flow spec route will include uh, two major parts. The first is the uh, filtering uh, components, of course. And in this case, uh, we use the desti destination IP address uh, as a filtering condition. Uh, which is nothing new, but uh, for the action parts, uh, we are. Uh, this is uh, something we uh, newly uh, proposed in this draft. So uh, we are using a combination of, of different uh, action components. Um, here we pr uh, propose to use uh, three components in this example. Uh, the first two is uh, the redirect IP uh, extended community, and the second is the color extended community. community. So basically what you can do with uh, the two components is that when the uh, head end router, uh, router two, uh, receives the two uh, components, it can use it to uh, associate with an uh, SRV6 policy, uh, which as shown in this figure is uh, the uh, policy two, oh, okay? And then um, the third component, uh, action component is, uh, is actually an uh, optional component but in this case uh, this component is needed uh, is needed which is an um, l3 uh, service uh, seed TLV so uh, for cases uh, especially in an uh, VPN uh, traffic theory uh, case you want to uh, like specifically identify uh, which link you want to like uh, direct the path uh, th the traffic through, uh, you probably need uh, to, uh, you know, uh, instruct the uh, endpoint uh, router to tell it, for example, in this case, uh, to tell it to use the uh, end DX uh, function. So in this case, uh, uh, L3 service seed is carried uh, in this flow spec route. Okay. And then um, can we go to the next slide, please? And then in this case, uh, we show that the component three, which is the service seed, is uh, not mandatory, which means it's optional, but it still has conditions. So in this uh, 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 internet traffic steering case, uh, we only carry the uh, redirect IP uh, community with a color community uh, to you know, indicate the uh, SRV6 policy. Um, but we don't want to like specify a uh, DT function there, uh, but this is under the condition that uh, the end seed uh, is USD flavored. If it's like uh, PSP or USP flavored, then you still need an uh, service seed uh, to instruct the uh, endpoint uh, router. Okay. Um, next slide, please. So here's a, a summary of uh, you know the steps that we have uh, in this draft. Uh, as I said, there's no uh, new uh, encoding and there's no uh, ion allocation actions needed here. Uh, so what we propose is generally uh, it could be two steps or uh, four steps depending on whether you will use the service uh, uh, CTLV. 
Okay, so the first step is that you need to generate a flow spec uh, route with uh, the, the the two or three uh, components we just uh, used in these in the example. Um, the service seed is optional, uh, depending on whether it's necessary. And in the second step, the head end should uh, uh, associate the uh, uh, the next hop as well as the uh, color community to an SRV6 policy. And then uh, if we have a service seed in the step three, uh, the head end should um, put this service seed into uh, the, the forwarding packets and then the packet goes through to the endpoint. So at step four, the endpoint will uh, take further actions depending on uh, the uh, service seed. Okay. So next page, please. And uh, we have also uh, made uh, two changes from uh, the uh, initial version. And uh, first, the first change is the handling of uh, multiple communities. And thanks to uh, Jeff's comments on that. Um, so in, in this draft, uh, actually, we we only want to like support or or say we only uh, allow the usage of uh, uh, one uh, redirect IP community with one. Uh, color community because we think that is sufficient and uh, for the for the purpose or say uh, the uh, intuitive of having you know multiple uh, maybe color community with uh, uh, redirect IP community is that we possibly want to do uh, load balancing but um, I would say that using uh, only one uh, uh, redirect, redirect IP with uh, one color community is sufficient for uh, load balancing. So what you do is that you basically uh, configure, uh, you know, multiple uh, SRV6 seeds, uh, lists, I'm sorry, uh, lists in an SRV6 uh, policy. So there you go. And uh, for the second change is uh, regarding the uh, cross domain traffic steering and thanks to uh, Kelly Rush's uh, comment, and um, we would say that um, um, the uh, you know the handling of uh, flow spec uh, communities um, in this draft for uh, both the uh, uh, intra AS and the cross AS uh, cases uh, would be the same. Um, the only difference uh, would lie uh, in the uh, local SRV6 policy configuration. Okay, so if you want to do like uh, cross domain traffic steering, then the policy should be uh, a cross-domain uh, policy, and uh, if you only want to do an uh, intra-domain, then it, it it would be an inter-domain policy. So uh, uh, that that's it for uh, for the presentation. And uh, any questions or suggestions? Yes, please go ahead. AC Linda, uh, Cisco Systems. Should this be a informational draft? Then, because it really reuses the SRV6 and redirect, flow spec redirect draft uh, standards. Well, I, I I think it could be an informational because it's like more like a, a, you know, an usage of some. Uh, existing a combination usage of some existing uh like methods i'm not quite sure but i think it could be okay seems logical to me this is you harris co-chair yeah sue did you have something you wanted to say I don't need to repeat what you said. Uh, if an informational draft would be more appropriate for this draft. Okay. We'll change that then. Any other comments or questions? Or, um, I'm sorry, uh, uh, I have a, a small suggestion. Is it mo more appropriate to make it than a BCP draft? Uh, I don't know. Let's take that offline. I, I would need to go and, and look the draft over again. 
Okay. I don't know if anybody else has any input on that question. Jeff. Sorry, I did raise my hand. Uh, I don't think BCP quite fits the category at the moment because uh, at the moment uh, it's not current practice, so it's not necessarily best current practice. Uh, it definitely fits in the informational category and okay. uh, you know, definitely okay. useful. Okay, thank you. Great, well, we are exactly at the half hour and we are exactly done with our agenda, so um, let's close. Thank you everybody for, you know, um, make it through another session and hope to see you all on Friday. That's it. Bye. Thanks. Bye.